Welcome back to Tappin' Sports. My name is Kamari. My name is Chandler. I don't like to do people's introductions for them, man. I want you to be able to do your own. <laughs> but <laughs> welcome to Tappin' Sports. This is going to be our AFC South preview. Uh, how you feeling today, Chandler? I'm feeling good, man. How are you? You know, I'm doing all right. Just trying to stay healthy. Just trying to stay healthy. Um, let's get with the Tennessee Titans first. So last year they went 9-7, and seven, uh, second in the AFC South. And they ended up going all the way to the AFC Championship, um, knocking off the Baltimore Ravens in the AFC Divisional Round uh, and the Patriots on the way to knock off Baltimore. So how do you see uh, Tennessee faring this year? How do you see them doing? I mean, I expect them to have that same type of offensive production, same type of, you know, year. I mean, they had that quick turnaround after Marcus Mariota came from behind center. Um, I don't really know if it was necessarily his fault, I just think Tannehill kind of came in and was a system quarterback, you know, and just kind of did the job that he needed to do to then let Derrick Henry uh, take the rest over. Um, and if they can do that again this year and just let, you know, Tannehill come in and just be a system quarterback, do the things he needs to do in the situations where he needs to correctly and do what he did last year with like what 22 touchdowns, six interceptions, then they're going to have just as good of a year this year, if not better than what they did last year. What was outstanding about Tannehill last year was he completed 70% of his passes. I mean, he was outstandingly accurate. Uh, they went 7-3 and three finishing the season with him. If it is going to be Ryan Tannehill's team. They gave him the contract. Uh, how far do you see them going? What, what do you have uh, the Tennessee Titans at? Um, I mean, I think that they're going to be around anywhere from 10 to 12 wins, you know. I think that they're going to take a deep uh, trip in the playoffs again this year, too. I mean, I think they're definitely a team to watch for. Um, you know, I mean, I think Tannehill's efficient enough. Uh, to be the quarterback he needs to be for that offense. Um, you know, the offense that likes to run clock, game management, stuff like that. And with an offense with Derrick Henry in the backfield, yeah. I think that he's going to be enough personally. And then Derrick Henry is going to be what really takes them over. So I expect to see a great year from the Titans this year. Okay. Yeah, I actually have them about seven, six, seven wins, just because I'm not really sure if Tannehill is the long-term answer. I feel like teams weren't really prepared for him or the coming of A.J. Brown last year. Uh, A.J. Brown had over 1,000 yards and eight touchdowns, and he really came onto the scene towards that last half of the season. Um, mark him down for your fantasy rosters this year. The key matchups that we're looking at for Tennessee uh, is week 11 with Baltimore. I mean, you know they beat them in the playoffs, um, but we're ready to see Lamar Jackson and Tannehill face off once more. Um, and the Tennessee Titans are going to match up with five playoff teams. So they're definitely a team that we're going to be watching constantly. Just I think it's going to be interesting to see how they talk Baltimore in that regular season game. Do they go the same way that they played them last year? I think that's going to be an interesting game to watch. That's going to not really determine their division. Uh, but I think it's going to kind of determine seeding for uh, playoffs in terms of one seed, two seed, because I do think the Titans and the Ravens might be the top two teams in the AFC this year. I have an 11-12 win team, and we're talking about the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, with the signing of Phillip Rivers, um, I, truthfully, I'm sold. Uh, they still have T.Y. Hilton. Um, they have Jonathan Taylor that they just drafted out of Wisconsin. How are you feeling about the Indianapolis Colts? Um, I have one question for you. How old is Philip Rivers? <laughs> That's my point, though. Like, he, yes, he was great at one time, but he, I don't think he's going to do much. Like, he might do, like, you know, like enough to give them, like, eight, nine wins. But, I mean, let's think about it. Like, I don't think he's going to do more than that. I think his I, – I, I personally think his time is when it's closed. He could come and prove me wrong. I mean, for sure he could. He's talented. But I just think he's too old now. I think it's the same type of situation as I talked about – in the AFC North preview about Big Ben, I think they're kind of in that same spot. Uh, maybe not Philip Rivers as much so as Big Ben, but I still think that Philip Rivers is getting old, and I just I don't think he has as good of a year as you may think he does personally. Or he threw for forty six hundred yards last year, so I mean he was almost at five thousand. That's not bad. I would just like to see his interceptions drop, being that you know he was around twenty three and twenty. Uh, I mean. He just wasn't very accurate last season. Um, he's 38 years old, so you did make a mention of his age. So I know he is getting up there in age. But I think Tom Brady has shown you that age isn't significant when you're playing football right now. That you can play the quarterback position at the age of 38 plus. We'll see how he does on the Bucks. Also, Philip Rivers went 5-11 and 11 last year, too, which is another thing to add. He threw that for which that number, were... he went 5 and 11, which does have to do with the rest of his team, too. But let's be real. What else does Philip Rivers have behind him? Um, this Colts team is healthy. This Colts team looks ready. And, I mean, the Colts team was honestly 
couple moves away last year from stealing a playoff berth. So I can absolutely see them going to the playoffs this year. They play the weakest schedule in all of football. Um, they have one primetime game this year, and it's versus the Titans. And then they play the Titans two weeks from then. So it's week 10 they'll play the Titans. Uh, and then they'll come back and play the White Titans again on week 12. So the schedule set up a little differently. Um, but I think it's set up for the Colts to really take advantage. I could see them doing more. But I really just think it comes down to what Rivers can do. I just think he's at that age place right now to where it's like, I don't think he's going to be able to do enough. Okay. The next team we are going to cover in the AFC South uh, was last year's top team uh, in the AFC South. And that's the Houston Texans. Um, led by Deshaun Watson, who completed nearly 68 percent of his passes last year, threw for 28 or 26 touchdowns, 12 interceptions. How do you see the Texans finishing up this year? Um, I think that the loss of DeAndre, the loss of DeAndre Hopkins, is definitely a key loss. But Deshaun Watson is also a great quarterback um, to watch for still. Um, and I do think that they're still going to have a good year. But I see them finishing second in the division. Um, and I see Deshaun watching having a solid year. I think we we'll see Carlos Hyde have a good year. We'll see the likes of Jonathan Grenard from Florida. I think we'll see him come in and make a huge impact on defense in his first year. That he's got, he's he, he's an elite player for sure. He came from Louisville to Florida last year, finished out his career at Florida, and was a crazy player there. Um, so I think that he's going to come in and make an immediate impact on their defense. Um, and I think that their defense is great. But I just think that they're going to finish second just because, as I said earlier, I think the Titans are just going to be the team to beat this year in that division. Yeah. It's going to be interesting. I mean, this is going to be a competitive division as well. Um, don't forget that they did lose uh, DeAndre Hopkins, but they brought in Brandon Cooks and Randall Cobb. So, I mean, those are two both speedy receivers that are already being added to a decent receiving core with Kenny Stills, Will Fuller, and Kiki Kuti. So, I mean, I think Deshaun Watson is going to have weapons. It's really just, is he going to be able to have the time to find those weapons? Because, I mean, offensive line has been an issue in Houston. Now, let me ask you, how many touchdowns are we getting out of Deshaun this year? More than 25 or under 25? More, more. I mean, I think we're going to at least see, like, one to two touchdowns a game, obviously. If you go two touchdowns a game, that's 32 touchdowns. So, I, di I definitely think we're going to see more. Um, I think he's going to have a good year. Um, like you said, he He's got those offensive weapons still. He doesn't have the likeness of DeAndre Hopkins because, I mean, DeAndre Hopkins is arguably one of the best receivers in the game, but he's still got athleticism out of Kenny Stills, you know, and out of uh, Will Fuller and, you know, all those guys that he's got. So he's got athleticism there. And with the two signings, like you said, Brandon Cooks, Randall Cobb. But I just think in general he will be like two touchdowns a game pretty much area. So I think he'll be anywhere from like the 28 to 32 touchdowns area. So definitely over 25. Yeah, I can see that as well. I, I'm actually having him as one of my dark horse MVP candidates. I mean, because without DeAndre Hopkins, I, I know everybody is thinking down on the Texans, and I don't like the move because I feel like they gave him away for nothing. But, like we said, I just think he has a lot of weapons around him, a lot of speedy guys who can take a quick catch, a quick five-yard slant, and bust it to the house. So that's going to be interesting to look at. Um, they have some nice matchups this year as well. Um, we're going to see him go to week one in Kansas City. Um, I mean, they're going to be playing the defending champions in the first game of the season. You, you don't even need to speak on that. Um, I expect a pretty high-scoring game there. Let me go ahead and get your prediction now for week one. How are you feeling, Chiefs or Texans? I'm feeling Chiefs, man. I mean, I think – I mean, I just think the Chiefs are better than the Texans. I mean, you got Patrick Mahomes. I mean, like we talked about in the AFC South preview when we were talking about Lamar winning MVP, it's going to be Lamar and Patrick Mahomes this year for MVP. And I think that's both of our opinions, too. And I think your opinion is Patrick Mahomes, even. So, like, my point is, is I don't think they're going to be able to do enough to beat that Chiefs in week one. Yeah. I, I got the Chiefs blowing them out. I do think it's going to be high scoring, but I don't know. You know those Chiefs are very high-powered. So, we'll see how that one goes. Week seven versus Green Bay at Aaron Rodgers. So, you know, that's going to be probably another high-scoring game. Um, just so those are a couple games to look out for. So let me ask, after all of the moves that were made in the offseason, do you think that Bill O'Brien, if the Texans do not advance past the divisional round, do you think that this will be his last year coaching them? Um, I mean, if they advance, if as long as they make playoffs, I think they'll stay there. Um, I think it also depends on situation of the season, what, what was their record, you know, going into playoffs, what, what was the expectations, you know. Um, 
and depending on who they play in that round and everything. But I think that as long as they make it with the right surrounding things that happened before, like it depends on context and what they're seeded going into the playoffs. Are they a wild card team? Are they a number one seed? You know, that type of thing. We already were saying this division is going to be pretty crowded. So I think that wild card spot is going to be something that they're fighting for. Last team, the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Florida team. So 29, you know, Nick Foles went down in week one, throwing a touchdown pass, and we ended up getting Gardner Minshew. Um, he completed 60% of his passes last season, 21 touchdowns, six interceptions, not too bad, solid starting. Um, do you think that Minshew is the long-term answer for the Jacksonville Jags? Minshew is such an interesting story, man, because what? He went to like five different colleges, uh, you know, didn't even get playing time at ECU. Then when he finally got playing time at ECU, he said that he and he lost it or something like that, and he tried to, like, break his finger with a hammer. Like, that story was crazy. And then he went to Washington State because he was trying to get a medical retro. Then he went to Washington State, had the – year of his had had the year of his career at Washington State, gets drafted, has a good year in his first year of the NFL. I'm telling you, I do think Gardner Minshew could be that story that is like a crazy story to look back on at one point. Um right now though, I don't think he's gonna do enough this upcoming year. I think he's gonna have that same type of year he had last year and build on it and have a good year. But I don't think he's gonna do enough to get out of the division and get into playoffs. But now if we're looking at the following year and the future, I think he is the future. I just don't think this year is going to be exactly in terms of, like, great. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, well, let me just start with saying this. I don't think the Jaguars are looking for a future yet. I think they already started rebuilding. I mean, you know, with all the allegations of how poorly that they treated their players, um, you know, with them losing Jalen Bra- or Jalen Ramsey, excuse me, uh, A.J. Bouye, Bouye was out. Um, now they're left with three starters from the AFC championship, or championship team back in 2017. So, truthfully, I just feel like they're rebuilding now. Um, I don't think Mitchell's going to be the answer. Uh, let's go ahead and look out for Trevor Lawrence. Let's say the Jags can get Trevor Lawrence, then, you know, obviously, yeah. But personally, I, I don't know. I just think there's something about Minshew's story, something about what he did this past year that just says a lot, man. I don't know. Well, that's going to lead into my next question for you. I was going to ask, how long do you think it is or it's going to be until the Jags get it together? So it sounds like you think that Minshew is going to be the answer. So how long do you think it's going to take for him to write the ship then? Or how long do you think they're going to give him? I mean, I think they're going to get a fourth place finish in the division this year. Um, I don't think they'll finish ahead of the Colts. Um, you know, but I do think that the following year is when they're going to start to right the ship and at least get a second or third finish in the division. Um, I don't know. He's there's just, I guess it's just a story behind him. But there's something about Gardner and story that just tells me, and especially with the year he had 21 to six interceptions, that's a pretty good year for that a rookie. A solid season. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. There's just something about him, something about his personality, something about just the dude as a person that just makes me feel like he's going to be a superstar at one time. Yeah, we wish him all the best. I mean, his season is or his career is very young, so you know he just started. So as we wrap this up, your top team in the division right now is who? The Titans. Okay, and then you're gonna follow that up with the Texans. Mm-hmm. Texans, and then and then I'm gonna go Colts, and then I'm gonna go Jaguars. But I think Colts and Jaguars are gonna be extremely close. Okay. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to switch up from you a little bit. I just think Phillip Rivers is going to give them the edge. I think him and Deshaun Watson are the best quarterbacks in this division, and they'll show that. Um, so I'm actually going to put Indianapolis first, follow it up with Houston and Deshaun Watson, who I think is going to slide into the playoffs with the AFC um, wild card spot. Uh, and then I'm going to follow it up with Tennessee and Jacksonville. So you don't think uh, that Derrick Henry is going to be enough? Truthfully, I, I don't think Derrick Henry is going to be enough to win eight to ten games. So I, I just – I personally don't see him beating – or them outscoring a Texans team. I don't see them outscoring this Colts team. This Colts team was already hard to stop with Jacoby Brissett. So I think with a solid quarterback, a arguably Hall of Fame quarterback behind center, I could believe in it, at least for one season. I'm not saying the Colts are going to be perennial Super Bowl contenders, but I can at least argue for them this year. I could see 12 wins. Our AFC South preview, thank you for tuning in. Uh, my name is Kamari once again. My name is Chandler. Yes, and we appreciate y'all watching. Please make sure you stay safe at home, y'all. Stay blessed. Have a good one.